Hey everyone, I am Rich Dotson, founder of DynastyNerds.com. I'm Matt O'Hara. And I'm Garrett Price. And today we are here to kick off the first video in our series of videos, How to Play Dynasty Fantasy Football. And in this series of videos, we're going to discuss the most basic points you should know when starting or joining your first Dynasty League. Today we're going to cover what is Dynasty Fantasy Football. So make sure you hit that like button, subscribe button, so you can stay up to date with all of our great Dynasty Fantasy Football content. How is Dynasty different from Redraft? What is Redraft? You know, Redraft is your typical fantasy football league where you have a draft in August. When the league is over in December, that's it. The league is over. Where Dynasty Fantasy Football is fantasy football for 365 days a year, 24-7. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the biggest point, the biggest difference in, in between Redraft and, and Dynasty League is in Redraft, you totally get rid of your roster year over year. It's it's a different roster. You, you draft a, a whole new team at the beginning of every season. But in Dynasty, you have an initial startup draft, which is is just the same as a normal Redraft League. You, you, you draft all, all the players that you normally would. And then the second year of the league, it's only rookies that you draft. And, and those players are, are, are there to kind of supplement your roster and build your roster for the future. So you keep your team forever. Correct. And then after your initial draft, you get to draft rookies from that point going forward. Deeper rosters, most dynasty leagues t- are typically 25 to 30 man rosters with taxi squads. But of course, we'll get into that later in our future videos. But the most important point here to know is larger rosters and you keep your team forever. If you get this really nice gift, you don't ever have to give it back. If you draft a winner, that's your winner forever. Right. And obviously you can cut guys like like you yeah. would in a normal trade league, league, trades, all that cut. kind of stuff. And like that, all that kind of stuff happens, but you have the potential to keep a player for their entire career if you, if you wanted to do so. Now, this is often confused with keeper leagues. The difference between a dynasty league and a keeper league is keeper, you're just looking at a handful of guys that will stay on your roster. They might stay on your roster forever or just for a short period of time, but they're usually given either the first few rounds or they have a certain round assigned to them. Right. Here, that doesn't matter. It is the best man on your roster, whether that's Christian McCaffrey or Patrick Mahomes, whoever that is, to to the worst man on your roster. They are going to stay on your team unless you decide to do something with them. Yeah, you can draft a player like LaDainian Tomlins in his rookie year and then keep him for his entire Hall of Fame career. If you drafted a guy like Tom Brady back in 1999, you still have Tom Brady on your roster I think today. It was 01, but. Still playing. You could have drafted him in 99. You, could, you, you would have had him for two college years the and then the pros. You have him so long, you're so old now, your memory's going. You don't <laughs> even know when you drafted him, that's how old it is. So that's the fun part about Dynasty in itself. So what makes Dynasty more fun than the other formats? You know, the formats where half your league mates quit and they don't come back the following year. Or when they're out of it, when the season's over, they walk away, they're no longer paying attention. The big thing here is in Dynasty Fantasy Football, what makes it so great, even when you're losing you're winning because if you win the league, great. You get a shiny trophy. Maybe you get a couple bucks in your pocket. And if you're losing the league, you're rewarded with a higher draft pick. And a higher draft pick gives you, just like an NFL draft, the first opportunity to grab that next LaDainian Tomlinson, Christian McCaffrey, Jonathan Taylor, the first dibs on that. So if you're the worst team, you're rewarded with the first highest rookie pick. Nice, shiny new toys. Yeah, and and for me... I know I'm the type of guy that I will, when I see a bad move, I see a bad trade, I, a, a draft pick for, for my beloved Browns that I dislike, my first inclination is I could do a better job than this guy. And I think that's what I love is you have the opportunity to kind of prove that here. You get an opportunity to look at all these rookies and scout them. You get the opportunity to look at the free agent and say, like, that's not a good free agent landing spot. I need to trade this guy because he's not going to do well with this team. You get to make all of those moves very similar to a real GM. And there's even leagues complex enough that are worrying about salaries and that kind of stuff, too. How the Whatever depth you want to get into it, that is available for you to be able to do. And I think that's one of the reasons I really love playing Dynasty. It's like being a GM yep. of NFL team or playing franchise mode in Madden. Yeah. The and same concept there. Lots of training go on. You trade players. You trade draft picks. Youth is very desirable. The older players a little bit less desirable. So why should everybody out there get out there today and start a Dynasty Fantasy Football League and start playing Dynasty Fantasy Football today, Matt? Well, I mean, I think it gives you a pretty unique opportunity to go out and kind of like find a diamond in the rough, so to speak. You know, you find a Dion Lewis uh, from a few years back and, and kind of pluck a guy off the streets 
and and plug him into your roster, and all of a sudden you're you're picking a guy off the waiver wire, and whether or not you're whether you're starting him or you pick up a guy to flip him and and, and turn it into a, a a nice draft pick the following year, there's just a lot of opportunities. Uh, in dynasty fantasy football to do those kind of maneuvers where in redraft, I, I feel like that's a little bit more limited uh, mm-hmm. just due to the, to the short windows there. Th- those kind of guys, people see them as a flash in the pan and they're not willing to pay a price for somebody like that. Uh, where in, in dynasty, they would be able to, you know, would be willing to pay and a price. With, and with 30 man rosters, everybody has value. The mm-hmm. smaller guy has value because yep. you never know when that small guy has become a big guy. You know, he's going to grow up and add some value to your fantasy football. Free agent season is huge. The off season is huge. Remember, this is 365. There is no off season. You might ask yourself, no off season. What do you do in January and February? Well, you'd be quite surprised where that's actually the busiest time of the year in dynasty fantasy football yep. is the off season. Make those when you deals. Get, when you're finding out the rookie draft, right? You're, you're more involved in his rookies than ever. If you love the NFL, Dynasty Fantasy Football is for you because the NFL draft becomes that more important. NFL free agency becomes that more important. Every transaction in the NFL has a ripple effect throughout your Dynasty League. Trading is that much more fun and that more important. So your league chats are way more lively yes. in the offseason because you're always talking because you're more invested into your team. You're more invested into your league mates because it all becomes down when you have 30-man rosters, your free agency is very limited. So the camaraderie that you develop between your league mates is that you're talking all year long because the only way to make, to make moves is the draft rookies or trade for players. And right. all that involves doing it with another league mate. And I think sometimes people worry about Dynasty Fantasy Football and they're like, it seems like a lot. Like, it seems like it's too much for me to handle. The good news is it's still fantasy football. If you've played fantasy football, you already have the basic premise down. It's just a better version of it. It's just a deeper version of it. And the best part is, and and Rich, I, I know you talk about this all the time. That's what we're here for. We're here to walk you through this. We're here to walk through those steps. We're here to show you what type of players you should be looking for. We're going to have a whole series of videos that it's going to help help you understand what fantasy football is, specifically dynasty fantasy football, and how to do it well. You've already made a great first step by watching this video. And just know that Dynasty Nerds is here to walk you through every step of the way. Our YouTube channel, DynastyNerds.com, and of course, our Dynasty Nerds podcast you can find on any podcast platform we are here not to only help you build this dynasty fantasy football team for this year, but for years to come and help you dominate your league mates from which rookies to draft, who to trade for, and who to sell. But really, it comes down to dynasty fantasy football is a very simple game. What rookies do you draft? Which players do you trade? Which players do you buy? Kind of like the stock market, when to buy, when to sell. Yep. And we'll be here throughout this whole series to kind of walk you through that. So make sure you hit that like button and a subscribe button so we can get into this next video and tell you more details about building or starting your own Dynasty Fantasy football team.